Here is the story so far on Simple Ahsoka. It takes us six episodes to find Thrawn, then only ten minutes to find Ezra. Wait, what? So last episode, Sabine rides a big dog. She finds some snail Ewok stand-ins that know Ezra. They lead her back to their settlement, where Ezra is waiting, and they both have a non-threatening, non-platonic hug. There we go, all caught up. So here comes the part where I summarize as quickly as I can the plot of the episode, and then afterwards talk about some of the scenes in more depth. Ready? Here we go. We open up with Hera having a military tribunal that, in its appearance, is the equivalent of being called to the principal's office. The episode had the opportunity here to show that there are consequences to Hera's actions. But don't worry, my little shields, she gets saved by member berries. Uh, I mean, uh, C-3PO. Cause no episode is complete without those cameos, am I right? We then see Ahsoka training in her ship. Still, en route to Thrawn's location to find Sabine, and while she's training, oh look, more member berries in the form of a recording made by Anakin. God, I can almost see the reactions now. Then Ahsoka and David Tennant Robot exit the Star Whale Fart Powered Hyperdrive and are in the middle of a minefield. Of course they are. These fucking whales never once thought that as soon as they started to get hit by the mines, that they should, oh I don't know, leave the minefield, but whatever. There's a bit of pew pew going on and Ahsoka decides to hide between all the bones of the dead whales. More on that later on. Next, we see Ezra and Sabine migrating with the snail Ewok Yawa stand-ins in what I can only describe as a bunch of caravans. Thrawn then gets his space arts to pinpoint Ahsoka's location, more pew-pew happens, then Jay Stevenson and his little chipmunk go on the attack. Jay has a little lightsaber duel with Ahsoka, which doesn't last long. She has joined the fight on the ground after finally making it to the planet. The chipmunk apprentice goes after Ezra and Sabine, some troopers turn up, who are useless because troopers are always useless in Star Wars. They then get recalled for some reason and Thrawn does the silent version of the evil laugh, congratulating himself because he has bought the time he needs to complete his evil plans. And that's the episode. Yes, watching this episode, I got very emotional, I have to be honest. As the title of this review states, that's because I kept thinking. Thank God there is only one more episode. Thank you, whoever is up there, for not making this longer. But enough mucking about. Enough making fun of things. Let's be real for a bit here. Here are some scenes I've picked out that need more attention. So, first up, the whole scene of Hera's detainment. This has to be what people with zero understanding of the law think a tribunal looks and acts like, because it's one of the most pathetic things I have ever seen. The senator that Hera berated for not being in the war in a previous episode is spot on the money when he says this. We simply cannot allow a general of the New Republic Security Forces to go around acting like this is still a rebellion. This is a government, and it has rules and laws which General Sindula seems to have no problem bending to fit her personal agenda. Hera believes that because she has the word general in her name, that somehow this gives her the right to do and say whatever she wishes. She has no regard for the chain of command, nor the rule of law, and quite frankly, seems very much underqualified to carry such a title in the first place. Hell, she even admits to not only ignoring orders, but because she doesn't like the guy who issued them. My job is to protect the people of this republic, and that is exactly what I was doing, in the best way I know how. I see, and you protected the new republic by ignoring direct orders. No, I protected the new republic by ignoring you. Then right before I think she's about to receive the bollocking she deserves, Oh look, Memberberry C-3PO turns up, in the middle of a closed session hearing. Now look, it doesn't matter what he had to say, or whom he was speaking for, he had no right being there. But even if he did somehow have the right to physically be there, and that's a big if, it still doesn't make sense as he basically says Leia is covering for Hera. Obviously he didn't say those exact words, but that's the purpose of him being there. But here's the problem. Hera has already admitted to not following orders on the record. So what Leia has done is commit perjury. I shit you not, this is what's actually happened in this episode. But it's fine. Don't worry. Because when women do it, it's okay. She got off scot-free. No consequences whatsoever. Which is quite indicative of 2023 sensibilities. 
Now we move on to the other scenes. So this involves Ahsoka's plan to find Sabine and her hiding place in the bones. Now look, Ahsoka is supposedly intelligent. She's meant to be the protege of Anakin Skywalker himself. Hell, we just saw a recording of him supposedly passing on his wisdom long after he is dead. So can someone please explain this? Once we drop out of hyperspace, we find Sabine. And how do you propose we do that? If we had indeed traveled to another galaxy and lost our chance, we would be useless. She came here with the enemy. We find the enemy, and we find Sabine. If we find the enemy, we'll find Sabine. In a whole other galaxy. Ahsoka, do you know how big a galaxy is? What you are suggesting will take lifetimes. Sabine would be long dead if we stuck to your plan, but it's fine everyone. Because the space hyperdrive farting whales materialize at the exact right planet. Now, ignoring the obvious idiocy of the whales not moving away from the minefield, as I discussed earlier, let's talk about Ahsoka choosing to hide between the bones. So firstly, how in the name of Zeus's butthole did she navigate that debris? She looked like she was barely moving on screen, but whatever. The miracles of Disney TV shows, I guess. I'll put it down to that. But the main point I'm raising is this. It's a graveyard. A literal graveyard. She is meant to have the wisdom of the Jedi, their compassion, their ability to reason. Yet, she did not think that entering the final burial place of the creatures she just hitched a ride with wasn't even a little disrespectful. Just, just even a little. But what can I say? First we had Sabine ditch a war remembrance day, and now this. I'm sensing a pattern emerging. This episode truly joins the ranks of all the episodes preceding it. That being it's boring, obsolete, girl boss orientated, and generally a waste of people's time. So with that, I turn this over to you. I can't wait to hear from both the constructive comments and the people who just hate me for saying anything bad about their precious Disney corporate Star Wars. So with that being said, I bid you all good night.